Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'll be talking about the three uh, very commonly used hooks in React. That's use state, use ref, and use callback, and when and how to use them. As well, I'll be providing a fourth secret alternative way of doing things uh, in case you ever find it useful, but you'll have to stay till the end of the video for that one. So let's take a look at our case study here. Um, we have an oversized button that's too big to be true in the center of our screen here. And uh, what I want to accomplish is when I hover my mouse over this button and I click on it, right now it just says clicked, but I want this text in the middle of the uh, button to update and reflect the X and Y coordinates of my mouse's cursor. This is the code over here. Um, we have a very simple button here. Don't, uh, uh, don't worry about the class names. Those are just styles uh, using Tailwind. So all you need to focus on is we have a button here and the button has an on click handler. It also has an on mouse move handler. Uh, these are the handler functions defined over here. And then that's the state variable. Right now it's hard coded to keep, to store zero comma zero. And then we want to update that. The next step is to find a way to keep track of the mouse uh, cursor position. And um, to do that, I'm going to create two react state variables using our very trusty use state hook. And uh, as I'm sure you've seen a whole bunch of times in your react life, this is uh, very, the most common hook I'd say in react. So in X and Y, I will just uh, change this to say X comma Y. So we have X, we have Y. I'm just for decoration purposes, I'll add some brackets there. All right, so now we have to um, go back and refresh the browser. You'll see it's just zero and zero still because um, we haven't done anything to set the X and Y values. We can do that inside of the handle mouse move function here. This uh, function gives us an event E. If I were to expand this on mouse move uh, code, it, it would look something like this. So it takes in an E. And this event comes from on mouse move, but then TypeScript is smart enough to just figure it out because there's only one parameter and I'm also accepting just one parameter here uh, that we can just use this short ha shorthand. Right now, TypeScript is complaining to us. Uh, it's because we aren't, uh, because this variable isn't in use. So I'll just take out the console log. I'll just say set X and then this event it gives, it exposes the mouse's cursor position because it's a mouse event using client x and then i'll do the same for client y and copilot should be smart enough to figure that out uh, right now it's still giving us an error because types i'm using typescript and not javascript and expects us to give us a type um, so this is a mouse event on an, from an html button element so copilot's got us on that uh, on that front so now if i save this and i refresh you can see that it updates automatically i'm not clicking anything but it's uh it's rendering out the mouse's client X and client Y positions on screen. The only issue right now, however, is that this isn't our uh, expected behavior. We actually only want this uh, this number to update when we click on the button and we want it to stay fixed until we click the button. That's why we have this handle click uh, handler here. And that's also why kind of the reason why I created this text uh, state variable, it acts like a buffer. So instead of returning X and Y here, I want this to display the text and then handle click just sets the text to be the mouse X and Y. Um, I'll make this a string literal and then actually I'll just copy paste this to save some time. So yeah, we'll set the text to be X and Y only on click. So now if I refresh the page, you see it doesn't update when I'm hovering over it and it only updates when I click on it. See it changes as I click it. So click, 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 right? So that's really good and all. And that's uh, the expected behavior. Now at this rate, you're probably rolling your eyes wondering if you've just wasted five minutes of your life on the most basic React example that everyone and their mother should know. Um, there's a catch. There's always a catch. And the catch here is performance. See, see, if I were to add this HTML uh, element here that just generates a ran random number, and then if I just refresh the page, you can see that we get a new random number every time. Now, when I hover my mouse, my mouse, my mouse cursor over the button here, you can see that as I move the mouse cursor, this component, oh, that's a beautiful number. This, uh, this component re-renders infinite times per second uh, because even though 
you're not directly accessing the state variables here x and y in this html element um this is called a deep uh, deep re-rendering versus shallow re-rendering and when you're using state variables it triggers a deep re-rendering that re-renders the entire component it basically rips this component out from the dom and replaces it with a, an updated component with the new random number that's why this is very detrimental to performance if you have some unintended uh, unintended hook that re-renders the component uh, and you don't even know it. Well, you'll know it when your computer starts spinning up its uh, fans like a jet engine and starts burning out. So in order to reduce the number of re-renders and optimize performance in React, we can use this thing called useRef. Now useRef is a way to allow you to store references to a variable that doesn't trigger a re-render unlike useState. So um, instead of getting x and y like that, I'll just basically say const x equals to use ref. This is typescripting. I say it's a number. You can also just you can also just do this without the typescript notation, and it should be smart enough to infer that you're trying to store numbers based on this initial value here. I'll have to import use ref from React. And then now in the handle mouse move function, instead of doing set x, we'll just say x equals to e dot client x. Now this should theoretically work because this is a ref this is a reference and it's not a state variable we don't have to go through a setter method to mutate it however you can see here that x is a type of const and that's why we have this mechanism here called x.current and it's just a property that gets assigned to whatever the ref is by the use ref hook and it's a way to mutate the ref directly um, without using a setter method in fact you wouldn't be able to mutate it with a setter method setter method even if you wanted to so we'll do the same for y. So y.current equals to e.client y. And then similarly, um, I have to do x and y.current here when accessing the current value because the x is basically um, just a reference. And actually, now I'm thinking about it, this is the con gener general convention of how to go about using refs is that you would, you would add ref behind it so if you're using your refs to store a container html element for example you do const container ref equals to use ref html element blah 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 right so um that's just how to access refs you have to use dot current and then now if i go back to my browser if i can just do that okay see now it's a uh, 910 i refresh it it gets updated when i hover over this uh, container it doesn't uh, it doesn't trigger any re-renders at all but if I click on it you can see it still works and it only re-renders when I click on it um, to show you that it's actually working I'll just add a console log here say event called so you can see the event is actually called a whole bunch of times it's nearing 1000 now but then none of nothing from the component re-renders so towards the start of this video I promised to explain three hooks and then the fourth secret alternative well guess what I lied Turns out I won't be explaining use callback because I realized that this is probably is not the best uh, use case to explain this hook, and they'll have to just ha they'll just have to wait for a different video. So that's good news because we get to explore our secret alternative ahead of schedule. We can actually accomplish the same effect for this uh, feature of clicking the mouse and not having this re-render a whole ton without even just using refs or state, and that is we actually have access to this e which is, I'm just going to copy that from up here. We have access to this event here in the handle click fu uh, function, which also has access to the same information as the handle mouse move handler function. And that's a bit more counterintuitive because it makes sense to have access to the mouse x and y coordinates on the on mouse move function because that's uh, the mouse is moving and the event can, should contain information about the mouse's new cursor locations. But on click, is it's less intuitive uh, but it, it, it's just what it is. There's X and Y coordinates in this on click event as well. And this is more optimal if, to using refs and state because it, um, it's more optimized and it's, uh, it only runs whenever this, this, uh, event fires triggers. So for example, I can do this instead of using X ref dot current, we can say E dot client X and then E dot client Y believe it or not. So now um i can actually just take out this uh handle mouse move handler entirely so we don't even need that look at how how much simpler our code is 
and how much more efficient it is. If I refresh the page, you see that nothing shows up in the console, even nothing re-renders. When I click, it still freaking works, and it's just wonderful. It's just so clean and so perfect. Just delete that. So that's the rule of thumb here, I would say. Whenever you're trying to use something with state, um, think about whether or not you can reduce that into a ref as in, do you need the entire thing to re-render? If not, you can probably demote from state to using references. And before using references, think about whether or not you can just d get rid of the entire variable altogether and just use the event uh, passed in to the argument of the handler function so that nothing has to be constantly updated, not even a background uh, variable like a ref. And uh, it's usually the best practice here for optimization. Before I end this video, I also kind of want to go through how you can use refs to reference HTML elements. Now, this is a throwback to one of my videos earlier, three years ago, where I was showcasing this library called Flatpicker, which allows you to use date time pickers in your HTML input fields. Uh, it's not really built for React, but you can use this with React. But first, I'm going to show you how this works in regular HTML. So you would have your HTML document, you would have an input field with some ID or some class name, and then you would call the flat picker method on this targeter or uh, ID targeter or class targeter or whatever selector you have. And then you would just to install it, you would just include the script that contains the, the um, the features and functionality of the flat picker library and then you also include the CSS style sheets Which doesn't seem to be working here for some reason So how would you do this in react? Um, I'll just go to my code example here Very quickly you can see that I just have an input with an ID of container ID And then I have a use effect hook that runs only once on mount because that's an empty array and then we use document.getElementById to select this element by its ID, and then we can run the flat picker uh, function to install basically to install the flat picker uh, component onto this uh, input element. The problem with this is that we don't really like doing this. Having this uh, connection here is kind of obscure. You don't. It's harder to see at a glance that this line is somehow connected to this line over here. And TypeScript obviously has issues. If you rename this to something else, TypeScript won't catch that. Uh, it's also a bit more confusing. So sometimes, what if this piece of code happens to run before the component is ever mounted? This would return null, and that's all a lot of uh, confusion. So you can use refs here. If I just make a container ref that is first assigned to null initially, but then in my input component, instead of passing an ID, I pass in a ref which is the container ref, and some magic happens behind the scene and uh, this input's reference gets assigned to this variable container ref. And then now I can do a null check to see if container ref dot current is null because it initializes to null. Theoretically, this should never be null. So if I, if I were to comment this out, it would still work. And um, however, I'm using TypeScript and TypeScript is very smart it knows that um this is sometimes null and we don't want anything to happen when this is null we want to bypass this so that's the null check over there and if you're using regular javascript this should not be a problem so now uh i can assign that ref to this flat picker function and then now if i refresh the page you can see that this works 